Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for those of you who are returning and for the sisters who are joining us for the very first time, welcome. I appreciate all of you being here. Today we'll be talking about information on PCOS. So every first and third Wednesday would be dedicated to information that I found on PCOS during my research and as I expand my knowledge base, I'll share this information with you. Um, so we'll be looking at what is PCOS, the types of PCOS, how it's presented, and generally how it can be managed. So, I'm Chad, this is Emma's your sister, stay tuned. PCOS, which stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome, is a hormonal disorder in women which affects how the ovaries work. And this is one of the leading causes of infertility in women. So the ovaries produce an excess amount of androgens and these are male hormones. And when this happens, the eggs are not released from the follicles and so these follicles are retained within the ovaries and it presents when you look at an ultrasound of the ovaries it presents as um fluid like it presents as cysts because they're fluid they're filled with fluid the excess androgens male hormones prevents the menstrual cycle from being regulated which then results in abnormal bleeding this also puts it as, at a higher risk of developing uterine cancer there are also cosmetic effects of PCOS, like for example, severe acne. Some women have male pattern hair growth. Some even experience male pattern baldness. PCOS also increases or insulin, it can also increase our insulin levels and in turn increase our resistance to the effects of insulin. This will result in our bodies not properly metabolizing calories. This can lead to obesity, it can lead to diabetes and heart diseases, and also the excess insulin levels in our bodies produces or causes the ovaries to produce more androgens. The exact cause of PCOS is still unknown. There is no cure, but what research has shown so far is that genetics plays a huge factor. So just to reiterate and add to what I've said before, some symptoms of PCOS are male pattern hair growth, male pattern baldness, headaches, dark patches of skin. It can be like wherever there are creases on your body, the neck, the face, um, obesity, difficulty getting pregnant, prolonged bleeding or um periods where you actually don't have any periods at all. During my research, I found that there were six different types of PCOS. For the most part, you'll see four. The six that I found were insulin resistant, which I spoke about earlier. Increased levels of insulin allows you to become in resistant to the effects of insulin in the body. Um, this can affect metabolism, lead to obesity, prompt the ovaries to produce more testosterone, and the cycle continues. And the second one that I found was the adrenal type, where there is um, DHEA, that's an adrenal androgen. Is that In that type of PCOS, that is the only androgen that is increased because the testosterone levels are normal. This increase in DHEA is normally a response to stress. So remember, you have to keep your stress levels as low as possible, as best as you can, right? And then we have the inflammatory PCOS. This is a this is occurs as a result of prolonged inflammation in the inflammation in the body. And this prolonged inflammation can stimulate testosterone production in the ovaries. Then you have the pill induced PCOS, where this only happens, the symptoms of PCOS are only seen after you come off the hormonal birth control. Right? So there's an increase or a surge in androgen levels right after coming off these birth control pills. 
Then you have the hidden type of PCOS where other factors may contribute to it. For example, hypothyroidism, which affects um, ovulation and can worsen insulin resistance. You also have where there's deficiency in zinc, vitamin D or iodine, it can affect the ovaries. And the final one that I found was the lean type of PCOS. So not everyone with PCOS actually gains excess weight. You have persons with PCOS who are actually very slim, but they have the other symptoms of PCOS. Diagnosis of PCOS to me is like a process of elimination. Why I say that is because the symptoms of PCOS is not unique to just PCOS. So having ruled out the other causes of increased levels of insulin and insulin resistance, having ruled out the other causes of increased androgen levels, having ruled out all the other causes of elevated blood pressure, and coupled with the symptom of irregular menstrual cycle, um, whether it is prolonged bleeding or um, not seeing your menstrual your menstrual your periods very regularly, coupled with uh, ultrasound which reveals the follicles or the cysts on your ovaries, then you your doctor would have diagnosed you with PCOS. There's no known cure for PCOS. And because the actual cause of PCOS is unknown, it's really tricky to say how to prevent PCOS. Now, what became clear in my research is that for persons who have the insulin type PCOS, insulin resistant type PCOS, if the insulin resistance can be detected earlier on, then maybe PCOS can be prevented. Now, treatment of PCOS or managing PCOS is about making dietary and lifestyle changes and taking the correct supplements. Now, it is very important that you know the type of PCOS you have so that you can know the best way possible to manage your PCOS. Whether or not, you know, you have the insulin resistant type of PCOS which leads to obesity, it's still important that your diet and exercise is, is, is implemented. Proper dieting and exercises is a must, ir irrespective of your illness in life diet and exercise is a must right so that is always recommended um and you have to ensure that you and your doctor you know try to find out the right diet that is for you currently i'm trying out the um keto diet it has been it has been working so far so i'm continuing on that path but it's important to know the type of pcos you have so that you can manage it and so that you can take the correct supplements because there are lots of supplements out there for PCOS and you don't want to just be medicating. And that is why I'm doing some research on supplements that are there. And um, the most popular one that I found is Inositol. I um, will be doing a review of that in the first week of February. But it's important that you and your doctor, specialist in the area, really try to figure out the type of PCOS that you have in order to help you better manage PCOS. So basically, management of PCOS is individual based. I can't stress enough that it's dependent on the type of PCOS that you have. So of course, the doctors will recommend metformin and this is mainly for, should be recommended for a person with the insulin resistant type because that one helps to um, reduce the insulin levels if in cases where the insulin levels are elevated. But so far, based on a lot of research that I've been doing, j just put going on metformin isn't the answer, isn't the cure-all for PCOS. So it's, um, you also want to increase your progesterone and estrogen levels so that you can have a regular menstrual cycle. Because as much as um, p there are periods of um, no menstrual cycles and you're like relieved, it is not healthy. Like I said, the more irregular your menstrual cycles are, the more at risk you are because you have PCOS of actually developing uterine cancer. So management of PCOS, I'm not an expert on this and I'm just um, regurgitating basically the information that I've been researching. But at the end of the day, it's best to sit with a specialist, um, get the blood test necessary that you need to get done because that's a diagnostic criteria that I should have mentioned earlier. The expected duration of PCOS can be from puberty to menopause where the ovaries actually stop producing these hormones. However, the risk of high insulin levels, insulin resistance, diabetes, heart disease usually is lifelong. 
but your symptoms can actually improve or completely disappear or go away if you properly manage your PCOS. There are a lot of women who have basically testified that they were infertile, but with proper management of their PCOS, they're able to have children. They have had children. Um, women have said that they are now having regular menstrual cycles. You know, persons who were overweight have lost significant weight. They're healthier. Just so it's important to know that with proper management of PCOS, you can live a healthy life. You should, though, take special care to ensure that you reduce your risk or the chances of developing heart disease and diabetes. You know, so in management of your PCOS, in your lifestyle, in your diet, ensure that you are accounting for the reduction of the risk of getting diabetes or developing heart disease. Now, um, this is really important. Not that other the information I've presented isn't important. When it comes to PCOS, it's, everything is important. But I want you to take, pay special attention to this because I don't know if we're really make, connect, making the connections or if we're telling ourselves that it, it doesn't matter or it's something else. But I want you to pay attention to this. Your stress levels can affect or cause you to become depressed, right? And uh, research has shown that between 27 to 50% of women who are diagnosed with PCOS say that they are really stressed out and they're depressed. This, this depression or this stress, this, ex this prolonged period of stress, it can be attributed to um, the chronic inflammation if you have the chronic inflammatory type of PCOS because with inflammation, your body pr um, produces the hormone cortisol and that is a key factor with stress. Also, um, with insulin resistance and prolonged high levels of insulin, what that does is prevents your body from really pr making the hormones that it needs to make or to properly you know, produce these hormones. And this causes your body to be in a state of stress and it can cause you to become depressed. Also with obesity, if you're, you have insulin resistant type of PCOS and you're, you're overweight, that can be stressing on anyone because um, of how you perceive yourself, about the quality of life that you will have when you're overweight. So this also causes you to be stressed. Another thing that stresses me out or causes my mental state to kind of be in a right, besides the prolonged bleeding that I have explained in Monday's video, is, um, the fact that I crave ice. I mean, in 2013 into 14, when the prolonged bleeding was going on afterwards, I started to crave ice. And it didn't matter the temperature outside, below freezing. It doesn't matter the time of the night, time of the early morning, I'm eating ice. By the grace of God, I didn't get the flu or get sick or something eating all that ice. And with the temperatures outside, it was just so, sort of ridiculous. But as soon as the prolonged bleeding had stopped and there were periods of no menstrual cycle at all um eventually that craving disappeared but since it started back in 2020 and whenever not just in 2020 whenever i have these prolonged periods where i bleed heavily i eventually start craving ice and in 2020 no well <laughs> last year no different and for months now i've just been eating ice and it's affecting my teeth again shaving them shaving it down and it's really bad like when i think about it i'm out for the entire day or i'm out for some period of time or i go visit my mom or something and even though when i go visit my mom i eat ice it was just there's, there's a different feeling of coming home lying in my, in my bed and eating ice it's something i look forward to when i'm not home and i just can't wait to get home to lie in bed and eat ice it doesn't matter what time of the morning 4 a.m 3 it doesn't matter i am eating ice I wake up in the morning that's what i think i just i need to go get to go to the fridge to get some ice and it's kind of draining for me because i'm like i don't want to be that person it's almost like i don't have any control what is this for you to be craving you know so it's really it kind of messes with my mind sometimes because i'm like i don't want to be doing this right so i'm just saying this to say that you need to pay attention to stressors that you have and even though we cannot it's not like a direct link, PCOS and ICE, <laughs> you know, and of course I could justify by saying, um, 
increased hormone levels, irregular periods, anemia, pica, eating ice, you know, but you know, um, even though there's no direct, direct connection between the two, you know, you have to pay attention to different stressors in the environment and try to manage them and try to reduce them. Because we know that even if we're not sick, stress isn't something that we should play with. Some stress isn't something that we should take light, lightly, you know. Stress, you often tell that stress is a killer. So you want to ensure that your mental health is duly taken care of. Don't take things for granted. Don't think, oh my God, I'm just being crazy or I'm being irrational or anything. Take care of your mental health. You're not alone in this. Do not take it for granted. If your mind isn't healthy, it's hard for your body to be fully healthy. You're, you're stressed out. You're producing all these stress hormones. And then you're already producing these um, excess androgens. It's not good. It cannot be good. So, you know, I'm just urging you, pay attention to stressors. Do not take them lightly. Do not sweep them under the rug. It's okay. Acknowledge it and try to manage it. And we support you. Your sisters here support you. There are support groups on, the, on social media. I, I found another one yesterday. It's called PCOS Awareness JA. I, I talk about PCOS Support JA. Neither of these pages are mine. But I'm just saying on these pages, you can find women sharing their stories, talking about what works for them, talking about what not what doesn't work for them. You need to know that you're not alone, right? And we're here for you. And uh, we want you to be healthy. I want you to be healthy. So let us manage our PCOS to the best of our ability. Let us live healthy lives. And like I said, not just physical health, but mental health as well, because that is important. So ladies, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for listening to me. And share this with someone, someone who needs to hear the information, needs to know that they're not alone. And hit that notification bell so you can know again when I post, even though I already told you my schedule, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you know, hit the notification bell. On Friday, we'll be discussing my workout routine that I have, I have been using. Um, but you know, take care of yourselves. Continue being the beautiful women that you are. Be blessed and enjoy the rest of your day.